All right, super coaches, strap in. Welcome to the official AFL Supercoach podcast. That's right, you're in and out guide to the greatest game on earth. AFL Supercoach, boom, right there. We've got 19, round 19, that is, in the bag. We've got round 20 to preview. I'm your host, James Clements, and joining me are three of the very finest super coach brains on this here big blue marble we call the planet Earth. Over there, he's back. It's Patch. Hello. G'day. I'm back. I got sent back to the twos to find some form and didn't, and you brought me back for... Why did you bring... Why am I back here? I'm... This Zach Fisher sort of style. Yeah, it's a Zach Fisher style <laughs> research, and so let's hope I perform better than Zach Fisher did on the weekend, but g'day, hello, delighted You're, to be here. You are taller and hairier than the stats boy, so it checks out. Sure, you know, if that's not? if that's the requirement, then there go me. Uh, we've also got the guru, Al Payton. What's going on, Al? Uh, yeah, the guru title is uh, <laughs> getting less and less accurate, I think, as the season goes on, but I'm all right. Uh, we also have the Phantom joining us to talk a very scarce array of <laughs> bubble boys. Are you a bubble boy? Sure. I found one. Uh, a single bubble boy. <laughs> Singular. And we also have Gun Fox footy reporter and, I don't know, AFL super coach, tragic Drew Jones jumping on the show, which is very fun. So you better enjoy it. Or, or else. Have, or we'll have some words. <laughs> All right. This show is, of course, proudly brought to you by Supercoach Plus. Follow live Supercoach scores on game day across your weekend. See all the break-evens, all your projected scores, and you can dominate all your matchups. Check out the show notes for a link to subscribe. Let's do it. Let's wrap up round 19 here, gentlemen. Uh, heroes and villains and your final score. Uh, I will go last because of reasons. <laughs> Patch, let's start with you. Uh, round 19 was bad. That, that End of rap. Rap done. Uh, not so much for the scoring. Lots of people scored very well. I scored 2306, which felt kind of good, and then I saw other people's scores, and I'm like, oh, that's, oh, that's missed the mark, hasn't it? Um, shout out to Sam Flanders. He's the hero. I VC'd him. We find after months and months of going, oh, we really should, damn, we should have considered Sam Flanders this weekend. I did it. 128 VC. Happy boy. Happy lad. Well done, Sam. Um, pity the rest of your side you can't score or play away from home, but you can. And we love that. Um, the villain, look, it would be very easy and very lowbrow to say Zach Fisher. Um, and I'm not going to, uh, because it's me, I'm the villain here, because I put my trust and faith in him despite knowing all that, you know, the context of all that is and all that will be, and I acted like I fell out of a coconut tree. Um, so I had the chance, I looped Billy Dowling, had him on the bench um, Friday night, um, saw, oh, well, like I should loop someone, 83s, but somebody will drop less than that. Colby McKercher onto the bench with you. I could have switched McKercher back and put Fisher on the bench and then looped with Elliot Yo, who wasn't playing, but I was blind by rage after. I can't quite remember what happened on Friday night, but there was something that just kind of threw me into a funk. And, uh, and there was some talk about McKercher being under some kind of injury cloud. Yeah, I mean, he'd like had, he's had his foot injury issue mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, he needs to pass a fitness test. And I'm like, oh, I fish, like, does Fisher back affect his scoring? No, it affects Fisher's scoring. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. I just didn't think it all that through. I was slightly hungover when I was trying to make the decision anyway. So, I don't know. That's me. I'm the villain. Was it something to do with the Essendon's? Uh... I don't recall, Al. <laughs> I don't recall. After halftime, I left, and I don't have many memories of what happened from there until waking up the next morning. So, I like it. Um, no comment. Nice one. Al. Um, yes, well, someone mentioned to me in the office this morning that uh, my Supercoach season is uh, my is my team, the Essendon of Supercoach. Oh, that's that <laughs> hurts on both counts. Was it Robbo? Uh, <laughs> no, well, Robbo actually beat me at Supercoach on the weekend, so this is all. Uh, the wheels are starting to come off <laughs> pretty severely. I actually somehow managed to score exactly the same as I did last week, 2,282. Um, yeah, not many heroes around. Caleb Sarong had a nice bounce-back game for us, and Dane Zorko... Um, that was a pretty hard game to watch just because there were so many really good super coach players in and not many of them scored well, but Zorko was one who did. Even after, I think, in the first minute or two of the game, he copped a big knock and I thought, oh, no, he could be another one of our injured players, but uh, came back to score one two nine. But um, I had a lot of 90s, but they turned out to actually be pretty good in the end. The ruck line was a disaster. Grundy, I mean, uh, just the 72 points away from the, away SCG, from the SCG. Brought in uh, the Nank last week. Uh, he wasn't going very well anyway, and then he gets subbed out uh, on 58 points. I had the, uh, I think I had VC on Zach Merritt on 
Friday night, wasn't happy with a 108, I think, so I put the C on Zach Butters, which seemed like an absolute sure thing. I think he spent 13 minutes in the first quarter on the bench, didn't get a lot better from there. Um, but then things got even worse on the Sunday with, uh, we've already talked about Zach Fisher, and my biggest uh, villain for the week is Lockie Neal. I finally traded out Matt Rowell, been talking about him for months, um, and I felt fantastic after that, after he scored, I think, 51 on Saturday. And I uh, thought uh, I had lots of cash, so I brought in, uh, just didn't matter how much I had to spend, 670 grand I think I spent on Lockie Neal. I knew there was some kind of chance the Sydney would try and stop him, but he's just been on such a tear lately. And at home. Yeah, exactly, playing Mate. at the Gabba. Um, it all sort of lined up, but, um, yeah, he was he was absolutely shocking. And I, there was a, a period there where I thought he might not even catch Matt Rowell. He scored 51, um, but he finally lifted a little bit in the last quarter to get to 78. But, yeah, he had a 40-something uh, point last quarter. It was yeah. The, the, it was yeah, he was in, in the 30s coming into that last quarter. Mm, so Leak. It was very bleak. So he's yeah. got five weeks to uh, make it up to me. But, um, yeah, pretty rough weekend. And as we'll talk about in a moment, some more issues for this weekend. And I'm down, you know, I've, I had this sort of luxury of six trades a couple of weeks ago. I've used four in two weeks, down to two, and might have to use them this week. So that little Ooh. advantage that I thought I had potentially on the competition is uh, fast drying up as well. So, Oh, dear. Yes, it's, uh, it's grim all round. I know. It sounds like, I don't know. Primroses and sunshine over there in our, <laughs> our territory. I actually know it doesn't because I don't know. I'm just saying. My role here, gentlemen, is very clearly the everyman. <laughs> the person who doesn't really, he just a lot of vibes. I have zero spreadsheets that are actually about Supercoach this year. I learn from the past. I don't need that. I can just go in clean. I'll just go pure vibes. And in a very rare occurrence, I've outscored you both. I feel Ooh. great about this. 23.54 for your mate James this week. Out of nowhere. Why is that, you might ask? Well, one hero. Okay, sing it. Caleb Sarong, Sarong. <laughs> Whatever will be, will be. Turns out 140 out of the stadium. <laughs> Al, we talked about this on this exact show last week. It was yeah. awesome. <laughs> Nailed it. I'm just saying. I actually had the VC on Butters. Uh, went Ooh. to see with uh, Sarong. So I just rolled the dice, obviously. It's like, cool. We're going full ball on Sunday. Let's go. And he repaid the faith. I love that. But on top of that, though, manna from heaven. You want a hero. When a hero comes <laughs> along, it turns out he might be from Werribee. Because Sean Manor comes from absolutely no nowhere, a.k.a. my bench, all season, and it's just absolutely ripped off an awesome run the last couple of weeks here, Al, to the point where I had to play him on field this week, and he had 95, and I never doubted him for a second. Yeah. To the point yeah, where I was playing him great. over Lawson Humphreys on field as well. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I believe in you, Sean. I believe in you. And he repaid the faith in spades. He's up to $312,000. Yeah, that's man, amazing. Sean Manor, which is awesome. Uh, but a lot of this was, I think, you sort of hit on, right? Like this week it felt like a lot of the primos didn't quite go primo, primo, primo. Uh, there was a lot of memos. <laughs> Medium primos, I guess. <laughs> uh, to coin a phrase, shall we say. Uh and a lot of that was like my sort of PODs, Jason Horn Francis, back to back kind of crummy week, 78. There's a villain right there. But my real villain is very clearly away from home, Noah Anderson. Oh, as Last it is week, every week. He was a hero because <laughs> he was at home, Noah Anderson. Where did he play this week? Away from home. And ergo, villain. 59, L! 59! It's, just, it's so predictable now. Could you just bench him when they're not playing at home and play a Lawson Humphreys or somebody and then just bring him on for those one fifty? Yeah, I like two points this week. It's so. uh, people first at him. Uh, the other thing was, so honourable mention for the hero, though, Tom Green. Actually, yeah. you know, used yeah. it pretty well. 117, I was very happy with that. Um, and Charlie Curnow. Rips off 108, could have been higher if he had a kick straight, a couple of weird sort of snaps around the body that were just like head scratcher at the best, but otherwise, I'm just happy to have... He got know, back down to sort of centre-half back for a couple of late intercept marks. I love a good intercept a, mark just to pad that stand. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's really nice. Either way, I'll take this week's win, you little ripper. Some non-wins, though. Let's do it. Super coach news, news, news. Yes, well, we actually have some uh, some breaking news uh, that dropped, I think, about 15 minutes before we came on air, got the email through from Carlton. Um, Tom De Koning was sort of on and off the ground yesterday, copped a couple of knocks. He looked really uncomfortable. He looked just like he was having a bad time. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, why, uh, why was he having a bad time? Well, as it now? turns out, he, he felt a little bit short of breath, so they've gone and uh, got that checked out, and it turns out he has a collapsed lung. Just, that's... 
just a little. Just and while a little uh, while he was there, they thought, "Well, scan your foot as well, because that's a little bit sore." And he's got a fractured foot. So Which those well. surgery as well. So yeah, he's already nuts. undergone the surgery, and they've gone right. That'll be you done for the home and away season. Yeah. So they haven't ruled him out for finals as Carlton supporters. You might uh, cling to some kind of hope there, but certainly for Super Coach, he's done. For the year, so yeah, shocking luck for him and anybody who's got him in the ruck. Obviously, he's been scoring really well. Um, the ruck is a bit of an issue. Um, we saw Nathan Kruger go down with a clash of heads. He's going to miss this week for concussion protocol, so can't use him as kind of a bench backup of any description. And the Nank have already touched on concussion protocols for him as well. So that's uh, if you happen to have TDK and Nank, uh, maybe Kruger on the bench. There's be people out there who've got all of those. Uh, that's not ideal at all. And yeah, I've certainly got Nank. So and Kruger, we'll have to come up with some kind of plan to get through those guys. But concussions, um, you know, obviously a big talking point and reared their head in Supercoach terms on the weekend with Jordan Dawson uh, copping a knock. So he's out this week as well. Um, I think uh, Jai Caldwell copped a knock, but he passed his so HIA. He passed, so he passed the concussion test, but they still subbed him off as the top-ranked Supercoach player on the mm -hmm. ground at that exact moment in time because they knew that the amount of time that it would take yeah. to do the concussion test – they wouldn't be able to get him back on the field basically in time to run out the game, mm. right? So yep. he essentially got subbed out because of concussion mm. for them to yep. do the test. Yeah. He cleared it and he's like, oh, my ribs are a bit sore though. <laughs> so there's still question marks about him going into next week, I think. But hopefully yep. he pulls up okay. Yeah, I think he'll be all right. Um, I mean, the other ones are Har Harry Mackay as well oh. was somebody who – yeah, was he looked very concussed? Um, <laughs> he, he kicked the goal after straight that. after it was fine, Patch. What but, are you talking but about? Then, but then had that vacant thousand yard stare of. <laughs> What's a goal? Yeah. Well, knowing Harry's goal think, kicking, that, is that a, uh, was that a, a symptom? I actually don't mind the idea of him just going to a happy place every time he <laughs> kicks a goal and doesn't have to think too much about mm. it. Yeah, so, yeah, so prefer he didn't have to acquire a brain injury to get there, <laughs> yeah. but there you know, some, uh, some it's Docklands. You need to do some too. serious things to be happy in Docklands. Um, On top of that as well, though, the, the ruck backup vibes as well. Luke Jackson obviously yeah. was uh, a late sort of like injury query where he had ice on the knee on his leg and they're like, ah, precautionary. You're like, uh, I don't want to hear that. No. Well, Max Ball was precautionary a couple exactly. of weeks ago. So that's a bit of uh, a nervous watch. And Connor Rosie as well was um, had some sort of hip issue uh, against the Tigers and sort of struggled to play out the game. So you'd think he'll probably get up this week, but a few players uh, on watch this week. And when we get... Um, the man on the ground out there, uh, Fox Footy's Drew Jones, will quiz him about about these guys because he'll be the one out watching them at training and hopefully telling us uh, what's going on. The mm. Rosie hip one seemed like it was okay as well. Mm. They were just like, ah, it was bugging him, but it wasn't too bad. Was so. it a case of we're playing Richmond, so, <laughs> I why, think so. why bother? I think so. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, well you've also meant you've, you've left off one of the big ones as well where um, Zach Fisher's come down with a sense of, of <laughs> like he's got VFLitis. Yeah. Um, which a debilitating case. Debilitating <laughs> case. The most terminal case we've seen in quite some time where um yeah, was subbed out, didn't score very well, didn't look very injured, just looked not very good at, yeah. at football. So and yeah, if you've got, you know, some of these guys, you know, Kruger on the bench in the forward line, you know, Jackson's a question mark, and maybe you'd be wanting to swing him into the ruck anyway. Yeah. And then if you're relying on Fisher. Um Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, Issues. And, I'm, you know, when a couple of weeks ago I thought, well, I've got this set up nicely with all these DPPs on the bench to cover different lines. Yep. But, I mean, that was like Fisher and Sexton who have both kind of blown up since then. Will Dawson obviously not scoring anything. He's useless. Um, kind and Brown maybe will get back Maybe this he week. had 26 tackles in the <laughs> VFL. 24. It was nuts. So Insane. maybe he's so the, uh, the saviour. Maybe, but he'll come back as the sub and score well, nine points. Yeah, um, true. So that's nine more than I'd score otherwise. <laughs> Nice one. There is a lot going on. Anyway, so, so, so like, do we do we use trades? Yeah, this is on the big these. question. Like, you've got say Nank and Kruger in your ruck line. Um, God help, you've got TDK as well. Do you trade Nank this week to avoid a donut, or mm. do you hold him and just grin and bear it, or well, frown is, and bear it? I'm this is like a sort of meta conversation, mm. isn't it? Like, this is like the biggest talking point that we've got written down here is after our nineteen. Everybody is very low on traits. Like, how do you manage the carnage? It is almost compounding carnage at this point, right? Like, we've copped a bunch of injuries the last couple of weeks. We've gotten through pretty clear for a lot of the season where we're just trading willy-nilly just because we want to. Because we have the freedom to. Remember those happy uh, Elskong yeah. days? 40 they trades. Amazing. 40 uh. trades. Imagine that. I've got boosts coming out the wazoo. Remember the I just like this guy more than this guy. I'll trade for him. Now it's like, oh, God. What? <laughs> now I'm just like... My entire team is like Sean Manners and Lawson Humphreys, and away we go. I, I'd like to like 
the, all the people that were complaining about adding more trades at the start <laughs> yeah. of the year. Where you at now, fam? Yeah. Like, it's very, very quiet. Out there. How how we feeling? Are we how, right? How's that uh, Jesse Hogan kind of strategy looking now at the start of the year? I should have just to... held him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like genuinely, lockout lifted, and I looked at the options I could trade Zach Fisher to. Hogan is the best option. <laughs> Love it. He's currently in my team. It'll get reversed, but he's in there. That's, this is, that's where I'm at. I think it's also one thing just to have a quick look back at the start of the year. And we sort of hit on this last week as well. Like primos are primos for a reason, right? You can almost a lot of the time trust in them to maybe ride out some of the roller coasters of the season. But there's a reason we probably assume that they're primos, right? You look at if you had have held Rosie, Hayden Young, Nick Martin throughout the year, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Like you're probably being rewarded. You might have a couple of extra trades in the pocket. Uh and like the sort of the point fluctuation is what I'm kind of interested in. What would have happened had you have had like the gumption? That's a great word right there. Gumption, gumption to ride those out. Mm -hmm. uh, because like it's probably my biggest regret is sort of like the double trades here and there where you're like, ah, this guy, not sure about this. This is a better option. Sometimes the first option is the best option. You can just ride it. But it sort of leaves us now with like big questions of we all have very few trades remaining. I've got two left. I managed to not trade last week. This week I might not have to again, which is good because uh, I'm sort of like touch wood, skiving through. But, I mean, what is the strategy? Like do you just go for broke and go, right, I've got two trades left. I just need to cover any donuts, any possible donuts. Let's get them, clear it out. Let's go and just hope for the best. From I think it's just watching that sort of countdown clock of the rounds, how close we get to the end of the season. If there was like three rounds left, and you had a guaranteed zero on the field like a Nank, I think it's worth using a trade. This is talking if you've only got two or three trades left. If you've got five or six or something, then sure, go ahead. Have at it. But, yeah, I'm not sure who's in that situation anymore. Um, and if you are, call me. <laughs> I've got, I will pay you to Venmo me a trade. Um, but, yeah, so someone like TDK, I think, trade, because that's you know potentially five donuts between now and the end of the year. Someone like Nank, and for me, I've got two trades left, tempted to just ride it out for one week because, you know um, – you know, assume he he's, he's gets through okay and Dawson sort of the same. They will come back the next week. You'll get him for four more rounds through the finals in Supercoach Leagues for most people. Um, and it's a question of if I use that trade now, what if another player went down and you lose him for three weeks? Yep. And I wish I'd had – I mean, it's all, you know, guesswork. But it's sort of, you know, you're trying to weigh up the odds as you get closer and how many rounds are left. But I think there's still five left. I'm probably not going to just need your trade for a one-week – Injury, what do you think of that? I think it depends on your situation, as you've kind of mm. alluded to. If you're in, if you're just going for league and you're in a cash league and you're ninth yeah. and you're playing eighth this week <laughs> and you've got Nank on the bench, you've got one trade left. If you don't use it, then you're out of your league finals. Mm. Like, may as well die, you know, <laughs> not die wondering. Um, and similarly, if you're like really close to the top, I doubt you'd have many trades left. But, you know, if you're going for ranking and you're in the top, you know, a couple of hundred, May as well, like those, you know, 100 points at this stage of the year mm. from a donut of not having an anchor as compared to trading to Gorn or English or Cherry or whoever else, um, worth the punt. But if you're, you know, if you're in like the top four of your league and you're set for league, but you can you can drop one. You can drop a game. You can have that donut. Um, you know, ranking, like, yeah, I, I think you really have to weigh up what you want from the rest of the season and then how you – you know, how you best twist that to your advantage. It's trying to weigh the odds of, like you say, you're probably losing 100 points by just sitting Nank on the bench and copping a zero there compared to who you might trade him in, uh, trade him for. Um, but, you know, if you lost a player the next week and they're out for three or four weeks, you're going to lose more than 100 points. But the closer yeah. you get to the end, yeah, the, the less points you lose, the odds are sort of uh, lesser that you will end up behind. So, yeah, it's yeah. trying to – it's a bit of always a, yeah, a bit of guesswork trying to predict that. But given what's happened in the last two or three weeks, yeah. I think you can probably say there'll be – Something will happen between now and yeah. around 24. I, I think if you've got cover, I think you hold this week. Um, yeah, any any rookie, even if you're getting 50 or 60 points, yeah. you know, that's probably worth it. Just well, I was, if you've got Sean week. Manor and you're getting, <laughs> you know, 95 minimum. Um, Love it. <clears throat> uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> the targets out there, Al, like in terms of like the Nank replacement, if you want to bring somebody in, like Cherry's obviously been fantastic all year for North. He's at 604. Gorn is the interesting one. Like, <laughs> yeah. You've gone from Gorn to Nank to go back to Gorn. That's fun. Like, why it, not? It, is it fun? Is that the word you <laughs> It certainly is something. It, it is that. something. 599 Maximus Aurelius Gornicus. And that obviously depends on whether or not he's playing, of 
course, which is still a question mark. The cherry one I love. I just I love the way he goes about it. You know? <laughs> yeah, um, it's what I'm all about. Uh, outside of that, you've got Trelaw, obviously crushing in the mid at the moment. Only owned by three percent of coaches out there, which is crazy. Averaging 115, 571. The Trelaw sort of lack of appreciation is very akin to the Lockie Neal at the start of this mm-hmm. season. I feel like where it's just like, yeah, we've you know, it's sort of like it's not a young, fun, sexy new name, is it? But results is results. I think everyone's got Bond, so you kind of think, well, that's my Bulldogs midfielder. I don't need any others. But, yeah, I think there is also the, like, just inevitability of Luke Beveridge just (laughs) hanging over that side. Bevoing somebody. um, Where, and even if it's not, you know, deliberately Bevo doing it, you look at, like, Libba this year had the head knock concern, was all over the shop. Jack McRae's in and out. You know, no one feels safe in that side, and I don't really want to go near it, even though Trelaw has the runs on the board this year, there's no indication that he's going to get dropped. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, I. it's scary and I don't like it. Nice. And big props to, you know, um, to Trelaw. Could be all Australian, could be best and fairest, but nah. The other nah. one is Cripps, who's at only 9% of ownership and his five-round average is 123.2. Mm-hmm. Not bad. Not bad, just not saying. Bad. For my beloved, he's not cheap, unfortunately, anymore. Yeah, he's now at six fifteen. So uh, Tom Stewart at five twenty seven in terms of defence. I mean, this is what I was talking about, right? The primos are primos. Yeah, primos is primos. Mm-hmm. Uh, his scoring this week was fine, but mm-hmm. like you know, it's just at least solid. And then yeah, you just just feel safe with him. Like he's going to get you one hundred five, one ten, one fifteen, pretty much every week. Yeah. Especially with that role, I think it's going to be interesting yeah, to have great. Geelong go the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. Like it's like, all right, cool, we're throwing Tom Stewart in the middle. Mm-hmm. And we lost to the dogs. Oh, God, what do we do now? But it still feels like, you know, he's a, the most reliable scorer, I think, on that entire Geelong team. So, uh, and outside of that, Ben Keys, who has been absolutely oh, shredding. Oh. <laughs> Talk about five round averages. He's at like 120 plus or something for like the last five rounds. Which yeah, is after chaos. averaging about 60 for the first 14 rounds or something. Uh, love that. So I've actually, <laughs> I've managed to, I think, snag him on draft. Oh, that'd be a great pickup. Yeah, I don't know if I'd be quite brave enough to do it in classic, <laughs> but um, you mentioned uh, Cherry, and I think um, yeah, there are some decent options, including potentially going back to Gorn. But if you were going to trade a Nank type or TDK, uh, Cherry's just been so reliable all year. Um, yeah, it doesn't seem to get injured, and North has the best run home for Rucks in terms of their matchups, including this weekend against Geelong, where they're playing uh, Sam DeConey, Is it mm-hmm. uh, in the Ruck? Uh, he's not winning a heap of hitouts, so. Um, yeah, Cherry uh, has some pretty juicy matchups coming up, so I like him as a, a Nank replacement. 15% ownership, 118 five-round average as well yeah. for Cherry. Mm. That's pretty good. Imagine he started like, anyone who started him oh. and held him the whole way through at 400K or whatever, <laughs> well done. You've won. <laughs> nice one. All right, and then, look, we'll talk about this probably more next week, but the overall rank versus your leagues, mm-hmm. uh, this is like the big sort of focus mm-hmm. at the pointy end of the season, of course. Um, it all sort of depend on what you're doing with some of your trades, of course. Uh, and if you are trying to make finals, if you're trying to do this sort of stuff, you know, just keep that in the back of your mind. It's like, what is my goal here? What am I trying to get out of my season? Am I trying to like get bragging rights over my mates and smash them in our league? Or same thing goes for their overall rank. Like, yep. you know, between you guys who are at the pointy end of the actual rankings, as opposed to your mate Jim, who's in the creamy, creamy middle. Uh, what do we reckon here, Alex? Well, I think just, yeah, as you say, maybe we'll go into a bit more detail next week when we come into league finals. But um, it's interesting, the contrast that you mentioned between the two of us, and I think um, Patch is similar, that we've uh, sort of gone for broke to try and, you know, you're just looking at those rankings every week, you know, dreaming of maybe top 100 or something like that um, and, you know, made some maybe risky moves, blown all the trades, and now it's all uh, sort of slipping away. And now I think, you know, starting to, maybe I need to think about what's happening in my leagues. And you look over there and there's players who maybe haven't, gone quite as hard, who are actually um, putting up some decent numbers at this time of year, which which might uh, come back to bite me. So, um, yeah, I think the, ba- the basic idea is you, you play a little bit more conservatively um, if your focus is on league. So if you can come in this time of the year, I think I was talking to uh, Gilbert Gardner upstairs. He said he's got about 10 trades left oh. and he can just, uh, his ranking's completely shot, but he can now just pick off anybody he wants. Yep. He's got guys sitting on the bench who are worth like 300 grand. Oh, the dream. <laughs> what a world. The dream. <laughs> So, yeah, that's definitely a valid way to play. And the last little thing is, I guess, what can we do if we can't trade? If you don't want to trade, if you're sort of stuck, if you're out of trades, Mm -hmm. if you're like, I just, I can't use my last two, I need them in my back pocket. 
what are the best ways to sort of get around this, do you think? Is it looking at your pods for captains? Mm -hmm. Is it sort of trying to go against the grain? Is it looking what the top 1% have been doing and sort of going, right, what can I sort of glean from that? What do you think, Al? Three, oh, if I can jump in, three easy steps. One, lie down. Two, <laughs> try not to cry. Three, cry, cry a lot. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you fix it. Well, we just saw on the weekend how important captains are and um, no guarantees of getting it right as I, I sort of struck out two from two. But, um, yeah, like you can just put your focus into, you know, getting your right bench loops and you talk about, you know, bringing on a manor or versus Lawson Humphreys or, you know, looping a Billy Dowling score yeah. if he plays early in the round. So there's little things like that you can do. And, you know, it's a great time of year to delve into Supercoach Plus because there's so many great tools in there from the projections to – you know, there's career stats on every player, see how well they score against certain opponents or at certain venues. Um, and the one I really love is the matchup ranking. So you can see, for instance, this week that Cherry plays Geelong, who give up the second most points to Rucks, um, and that can really help you in terms of picking, you know, a captain, especially VCs and, and even if you do have trades. So, um, yeah, there's lots of little tools you can use. And the, the, probably the easiest one is the optimize button um, that does use sort of uh, some smart technology to throw your team around and give you the best projected score on the weekend and that can actually even include moving DPPs and getting guys off the bench and throwing them into, you know, if you've got Lawson Humphreys stuck in your midfield, maybe it you know, it can get him into your back line. So um, that's a really handy little tool to use. Nice. Good stuff. All right, let's go to our chat now with Fox Footy's amazingly chinned <laughs> Drew Jones. All right, here he is. He is the man with the jaw that'll break your heart and break some glass. It is Fox Footy's very own Drew Jones. Drew, what is going on? Welcome to the official AFL Supercoach podcast. Gentlemen, that, that energy that has been brought, that has knocked my socks off for a Monday afternoon. <laughs> no, thanks for having me. Long time listener, first time caller. I think... First cab off the rank, uh, it feels like you might have bragging rights on this show after this week here, Drew. What was your score this week in Supercoach? Yeah, I got lucky this week, 2,389. So not bad, oh, not bad. All skill. All, there's no luck involved there. That's <laughs> We had bad luck, Al and I. You, all <laughs> skill from you. I just can't believe that my reign as the best scorer on this show lasted <laughs> all of 25 minutes. Like, come on, man. Like, you're breaking my heart here, Drew. Who was your best performer this week? What what got you there? Oh, um, well, I think everyone played well at this point, didn't they? Um, I had, I VC'd Merritt, which in the end wasn't a great call, but Bont got the job done as skipper, as he always does. He's a great fallback. Um, but I'd have to say props go to Nathan Kruger for his 24 off the bench. I think every point counts. So big Freddie filling in for Max. <laughs> Hopefully this is his one and only <laughs> opportunity to take the field. He's no Ned Moyle, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Jeez, watch out. Uh, let's start there, Drew. I mean, tell us about your super coach experience. How's your year gone? Have you made some moves that you're just like still bragging about that you're absolutely vibing on? Uh, are there some that you just want to take back, i.e. all of mine for the entire year? Yeah, look, the Jordan Sweet fiasco um, wasn't good for anyone, especially those who went Sweet at R2. So I traded uh, Grundy to Sweet and just was in a world of pain uh, <laughs> for three or four weeks trying to fix that. Um, and after Ron Marshall pumped out a couple of sh absolutely monster scores, I think I got him in the week that he got it a really low one and he was captain. So that was probably the, the low point of my year. I think, I mean, I'm sure you guys can relate. The stuff you remember is the things that you totally muff up, that you totally destroy. I was going to drop a, an F-bomb there, but probably not <laughs> the time for it. But that you, you, you hardly ever revel and celebrate the victories. You only ever get disgusted by the terrible decisions that you make. So they're the ones that I probably hang on to. But um, I started with Sarong and he punched out that huge score round one. Um, he's obviously been struggled in recent weeks, but bounced back a little bit on the weekend. Um, so that's been a win for us. I think whoever had Nick Martin at the start of the year, that's paid massive dividends. I was at Essendon training literally asking about his role during the preseason. So I felt like I actually didn't want to tell anyone because I was like, maybe I'm going to have one up on everyone and get Nick Martin in all my draft leagues and get him as a backman. But yeah, got, the news got spread pretty fast. But no, it's been a fun year. We may as well jump into that now. Like you, you are out there at training and at presses. You know, I'd, have you ever like just kept one in your back pocket and just been like, oh, someone's going to debut this week? 
Um, let's like trade for him in a draft league and then like tweet it after the trade's gone through. Like, have you ever have you ever used that that position for personal gain from a fantasy football perspective? Uh, well, it depends. The answer of this um, fishes between yes and no, depending on whether people in my draft league would be listening or watching. Um, uh, of course, I yeah. would be. Uh, Company line would be I would never use my position to in any way get an advantage uh, in fantasy sports. But, I mean, I think it gives me an advantage in that I just have a direct line to clubs. So sometimes I do reach out to find out more information about fantasy players that I'm interested in that perhaps I didn't really need to make that phone call or send that text. <laughs> but um, And people do sometimes come to me in, in, in regards to fantasy sports knowing that I can ask questions on their behalf. Um, but I was doing a little bit of that today, knowing that I was chatting to you guys, asking Melbourne about Max Gorn and, and Jai Colwell, which we can get to a little bit later on. Um, but yeah, look, it does give me an advantage and I would be lying if I said I didn't go to press conferences and ask questions that I'm interested in from a fantasy perspective and not necessarily um, in my primary role as a Fox Sports reporter. But I guess there is also, and as you found out very much this year, there is that market for that and the people are really interested for it. And like, you you know, you'll do a tweet about, you know, Nick Martin having a knock or something and it'll it'll pop off. Is it, Have you found that there is really that audience for that fantasy content that is not just you doing it for yourself? It's, you know, it's doing it for the that broader, you know, just super coach fantasy community. Oh, there's no, absolutely no doubt. I mean, it's been a focus of mine the last few years to try to capture, um, I guess, what fantasy footy fans are interested in day to day um, when it comes to injuries and role and form and selection, things that are going on at footy clubs. I feel like I'm in a unique position where I'm able to give extra insight. Um, I wouldn't say I haven't sort of gone into the content creating space, but I feel like I do have like a little audience on socials who are sort of paying attention to updates that I can give. So now I'm pretty much unashamedly uh, chasing every bit of news about highly owned fantasy players that I can because I think, honestly, I think that AFL Fantasy, you know, whether it's Supercoach or over on the AFL website or, you know, Dream Team, whatever it is, we're the most engaged out of anyone when it comes to day-to-day news about injuries and, and players that more so than the average fan. And, and we know more. Like we're across everything. So um, I think it's important to, to give people updates and insights so they can make the best decisions they can. Yeah, I mean, I'm interested in uh, just the sort of some of the nuts and bolts of the job. Obviously, you can go to press conferences and ask questions and you've got got contacts that you can uh, try and get intel out of. But like when you go out to a club, like we just see sometimes they put out, you know, test on the on the injury list. You know, what does that actually mean when, you know, can you actually go out and watch someone, you know, doing run throughs to see if they're going to get up to play on the weekend? Yeah, it's such like a, it's like a footy industry term, isn't it? Like, you know, there are tests this week or whatever. So, um it all depends on whether the club, there's a couple of factors. If they allow you to come to, say, the main training session of the week and then allow you to stay for an extended period of time, then you will actually see players doing fitness tests away from the main group. Um, sometimes they're conducted at the captain's run, particularly if, say, it's a Friday, they're playing on the Friday night, so teams don't come out till Thursday, but they've got to name it. So the, t- the test might happen on Thursday at a captain's run. Some clubs will do it indoors. You know, some will shut the gates and won't let you in. Um, so there, there is so many variables. But, um, I mean, say if I go to Casey, which is, for those who don't live in Melbourne, it's about an hour outside of Melbourne Metro where the Demons train, we'll probably see Max Gorn doing a fitness test of some sort on his ankle on Wednesday. Um, and the, I think the last time I was at Casey, not that he's fantasy relevant, but I literally saw Jake Lever, you know, walk over to the medical staff, grab his knee, talk to him for five minutes, do run-throughs around the ground. So, yeah, you are in a unique position to see that sort of stuff, but it can be a lot of luck at times. You know, sometimes things fall into your lap um, and you can't be everywhere, obviously. that We have a lot of commitments Some on Thursday. Sometimes all 10 Victorian clubs do media and, and are training in some way, shape or form. So, yeah, we do our best to stay across everything, but um, the test means essentially there will be some sort of fitness test at some stage. It might be five minutes and they might leave the track. It might be dramatic. Um, it varies, you know, every time. 
I, lo- I love this now because every time I see the dot pop up on Supercoach and it says test, I'm getting on the phone to Drew <laughs> and go, Drew, <laughs> give us the hot sauce. What's going on? <laughs> Come on. I need to know right now. Is Lawson Humphreys good to go or not? Uh, but outside of this, Patch. Are, are there some clubs that are like really good and you like if they put out an injury report where it says this person's out for one week, like you believe them, you trust them, and some clubs, not that I'd name any down the highway <laughs> that play at GMHVA Stadium, I wouldn't name any clubs that are somewhat less forthcoming with their their the accuracy of their injury reports. I think Geelong is contractually obliged to give misleading information. I think that's their modus operandi. <laughs> um, no, I think clubs are getting a little bit better in this uh, in this space because the AFL are pushing quite hard. Um, but then you, you do see those occasions where a player is listed at four weeks and then the next week they're down to one or two. or Yeah, there, there can be some some funny buggers. Um, but to be honest, I probably speak to every – like I'm speaking to every club each at you know, one point during the week. So you're asking for updates at some point. Um, and, yeah, uh, most, most seem to be pretty good at this point, especially with the – the more, like the bigger players, the bigger name players, um, they tend to be good. Uh, Richmond with Dustin Martin have been a bit funny this so far this season, um, I've found. Um, but for the most part, they, they seem to be pretty good at the moment. I love that. The Tigers could just start using it like Dusty Martin, RDO. <laughs> and, like, we're, 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 and everyone's like, yeah, it's fine. Look, he's earned it. That's yeah. cool. What he's else? No one can, no one can prove he's even been at the club. I mean, trained today, but no one can prove he's even been there for the last three weeks. We haven't seen him. Love it. Yeah, yeah. I think it's with him. You just They just wait till Thursday, maybe give him a call. Do you want to play this week, Dusty? <laughs> it's, like nah, don't worry the, about it. it's like coaching the twos, like adding <laughs> yeah. Kai yeah. Hagram. It's like, Dusty, you feel like a run? It's like nah, me putting together nah, a pub right. cricket team. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? You're yeah. around? I don't know, man. Like, come on. Come have some tins. It'll be good. Uh, what else do we want to hear on with Drew well, here? Well, right? yeah, I mean, you sort of touched on it earlier. Who are you uh, tracking this week? Because obviously there's plenty of names out there um, that the fantasy community are very interested in with, you know, potential coming back from injury or missing through injury. Yeah, the ones I just wanted to check on today were, um, were Gorn and Jai Coldwell, just because – when you get those head knocks, that clubs will very rarely come to the party with information about um, concussion symptoms that come on, say, the next day or, or two after a game. Particularly, there's obviously always controversy about. Um, even there's, there's been please explains put out to a couple of clubs about the way they've handled concussions last weekend. So um, I just checked into the bombers, and apparently Caldwell reported to the club fully healthy and absolutely fine. So. He's good to go this week. I'm pretty highly on forward, obviously, um, and been in pretty good form. So, Gorn, just the rundown. Uh, look, I think Gorn's going to play. It's what it sounds like. I know Simon Goodwin said yesterday that they're, they're confident. Um, but he's not going to run till Wednesday. So, day off today. Tomorrow's just gym work only. So, Wednesday is really the first time we'll get actually get to see Gorn on the track. Um, so, it's a pretty light week for the Ds. Um, who have they got this week? I think they're playing GWS Saturday night, so six-day break, coming, coming back travel from Perth. From Perth. Yeah. So light week, so we'll only see him main session Wednesday and then captain's run at Gosh's on Friday. But I think I think you could pretty much lock him in ready to go, which is good. I mean, he always comes back fast from injuries um, and the ankle was a bit nasty. So to go and turn him his two weeks is a good effort from Gorn. Um, is there anyone else you want to throw? Well, one player we touched on earlier is don't think he was actually injured, but uh, Zach Fish has been someone that uh, yeah. uh, fantasy super coach players have been watching pretty closely in recent weeks. Did miss a week or two, came back through the VFL. Um, so with players like him, you can look at you know we see you tweet things like you know training with the main group, mm. or you know they wear different coloured bibs, or he's got the no contact hat on, or something like that. <laughs> Are there little clues we can try and get early to know if he's actually going to? Keep his spot in the team. It should be like a no contact sombrero. <laughs> like, what are we doing here? Like, if you want to be really serious about this, get a sombrero out there because no one's going to go near you. It's much easier, right? Come on. Just, I'm an ideas man. I'm just throwing it out there. Or you can get like one of those like tube rings. You wear it like a pool and you just have like floaties on and then I love it. everyone bounces off you even if they do try and get you. Hey, what was the question? Sorry, Drew. <laughs> uh, I think the fish might be in trouble. I mean, I, I don't know if we want to be – putting our faith in him if we've any if we've got any trades left but it, I mean F5 and F6 have been challenging to fill the whole season right but they want the ball in Colby's hands like that's that's obvious and, and 
you know, the, the run and carry that he gives North Melbourne, the bounce that he gives him off halfback as opposed to Fisher, who is obviously a distributor, but probably a bit more stationary, needs to be on his own and in space. So um, perhaps they just don't want to have you know, the ball in Fisher's hands when they could be using Colby to create that drive. So, yeah, I mean, having been subbed off in a loss, you know, maybe that's not a great sign. But North Melbourne don't exactly have, you know, a huge amount of quality players to pick from, so they might be able to find a way to, to sneak fish in. Nice one. Um, I want, I'm curious, Drew, because, I mean, you've got one of the great chins in Australian media. <laughs> but, I mean, we see you a lot during the week. Like, what does your footy-watching weekend actually look like, though? Uh, it was, her- like, horrendous last weekend because I was moving house, and then uh, I did run Melbourne yesterday morning, so I was, I was pretty cooked. Um, so... Uh, I watch every game that I can, um, and either either on my phone or at home. Uh, and then uh, my partner actually works in breakfast TV, so she gets up at about four thirty a.m. every morning. So on Mondays, I get up at the same time, and then I rewatch all the mini matches in a row on the couch before starting work on Monday to just like get back in the in the groove, ready to go. So like I come in fully stocked, like guns ready to come out of the holster on Monday morning. (laughs) Not bad. I love it. Who do you follow, Drew? Do you get along to many games live? Yeah. I I mean, I try to go to the big games and obviously I I get good access through work. I can get into any game throughout the year, which is a nice thing. Um, And I go for West Coast. I'm from Perth. So um, I did not go on Saturday because I was moving house, but also – we are absolutely disgusting, so I really don't <laughs> want to waste three hours of my life. Um, so, yeah, I, I try to get to West Coast every time I come to Melbourne and then I usually do one Perth trip during the winter to get home to see family and then try and catch the Eagles off this. But um, my motivation to watch the Weagles is uh, low at the moment. <laughs> that's that's fair. Nice one. Well, you could have gotten Nell to help you out with the move, I reckon, like on the weekend. I mean, you've only got a small child, you know, you're, you're available on Saturdays, aren't you? Come on. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. You can carry heavy weights. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, anything else you want to hit on with Drew, gentlemen? Oh, I just think we need to let people know, if you don't follow already, at Drew Jones Fox on uh, X uh, to get all the uh, the news first uh, about Max Gorn and Jai Caldwell. We've heard it here. So there you go. We've Ooh. had a, a little scoop for the podcast. Thank you for that. But, um, yeah, it's a great source of super coach news. And, yeah, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll try and tap into, the, tap into that a bit more. Gentlemen, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Thank you, Drew. All right. That was our awesome chat with one of the great chins in the business, Drew Jones. Now, Al, we're going to go to the Phantom. All right. Finally, the moment we've all been waiting for, or at least we have been for the last couple of weeks because he's been on leave and we've missed him drastically. It is a man returning from parts unknown to parts unknown. It is our beloved Phantom. What's going on, Phantom? Oh, it's good to be back, James. Um, Two weeks of leave, but busy at work plotting um, the chase down, my chase down of the beloved Al Payton. (laughs) So where are you now? How close are you to Al? Or have you actually surpassed? You should should be asking Al, James, I think, (laughs) because um, I'm looking down on Al. I have passed him over the weekend just not a very big lead, but um, I'm top of the tree now, Patch, very far in the rearview mirror now. So um, Just it's all looking up. It's, it's, it's been a difficult few weeks for Supercoach. It's going to be a difficult five weeks to go, but it um, should be a good one. Nice one. Well, I guess that's sort of where we start, right? So we usually bring you on to talk bubble boys. But at this point, where everyone has probably between, what, two, one, five trades remaining bubble boys – are essentially the sort of the cash dump where it's like, all right, well, I just need someone in if I'm doing a sort of double swap or something. In that case, you can always go the uh, the rolling donut. Love a good rolling donut. But are there some that are actually out there, Al, that you want to do a gauge Phantom's reaction on? Oh, I mean, it is the Bubble Boy segment, so I thought we're going to try and find one, and it was a bit of a struggle. It is uh, no one came up immediately on the search of being on the bubble, but um, there's a couple of uh, not Bubble Boys, but sort of interesting. Cheap, cheap names, but the one who could be on the bubble this week if he gets picked, and we touched on his VFL numbers earlier, was uh, Kynan Brown 
at the Demons, of course, has played two games, 102K forward mid. Uh, he scored 21 and 15 in those games after coming on with about five minutes to go in both games, but massive in the VFL on the weekend. So he's someone who might come in this week and give us some, uh, I think he's already in 50,000 Supercoach team. So don't know if you'd be buying him, but uh, if you've got him, he might. we might have to play him. Um, and the other one that I spotted, which is um, a bit curious, is someone I had earlier in the year, Jack Carroll at the Blues. He's come all the way down to 133,000 after a uh, bunch of games as the sub, but uh, he got a full game yesterday. Uh, didn't put up a massive score, but got a few centre bounces, um, and he's now got a break even of negative four. Not that that means a lot at this stage, but any anything in the cupboard at all there, Phantom, if you just need a, a cash dump, as uh, James alluded to? There's not a lot, Conan Brown. You mentioned 24 tackles in the VFL, more than um, his total game time in two AFL games. So big performance uh, from him, Jack Carroll, uh, the famous Jack Carroll uh, on the Phantom lair. Pretty yes. good on the weekend. Started well, but I'm not sure you go there. There's a guy over here potentially playing his third game this week, Hugh Bond, as well yes. from the Crows. But um, the Crows love what he does defensively. We saw him play um, on Jack Higgins on debut against the Saints. Tag Zach Merritt on the weekend. So he's probably going to be in a negating role somewhere on the ground if he keeps his spot. So you're not going to go there either. So it's hard. I can't give you any more names. I'd like some more trades. Um, again, if you need a player, maybe you're trading your mid-prices or your premium. You're just swapping your premium at this point. You're probably not going down to a rookie. Zach Taylor, 194K from the Crows. He's been very good. He's still under 200K and he played four games. If you're looking in that price bracket, it's going to stay in the side, probably going to stay in the midfield too. So if, you, if you're some reason in that, uh, market, then maybe he's the one. Otherwise, you're probably just shuffling the decks a bit higher up. I'm going to give a bit of love to a Ballarat product, Hugh Bond. Just saying, just one of the one of the fellow great Ballaratians out there, and uh, I love his game. I was just loving watching him just towel up the bomb rays on the weekend. Just saying, just saying. We should anyway. get you and Bear on a pod together and just talk about Ballarat products. <laughs> just make I'll, it happen. The, the let's do it. <clears throat> Supercoach Pod Phantoms Lair crossover. I like this a lot. Uh, <laughs> Al, is there anyone else you want to sort of hit on? Well, I mean, we should touch on uh, someone who was a rookie a few weeks ago. I mean, he's the Phantom Lair's own, really. We're pushing him very hard all year, Billy Dowling. And uh, a lot of coaches with trades running very thin, possibly running out completely, are going to be relying on Billy for potentially the next five rounds, certainly um, maybe on the weekend and, and this week. Uh, do you think he's a, a valid on-field pick at this stage of the year? I think he is. Obviously, if you're not going to pick him ahead of some of the more credentialed players, but we saw on the weekend again the way he finished against the Bombers. Um, got a great endurance base, the Crows have said, and we've seen it at junior level, the way he covers the ground and continue to win the footy. Show that again against the Bombers. He was very good winning the ball in tight and then getting on the end of it too. So up to 302K now, 83 on the weekend, bowling on from that super coach ton the previous week. So have no hesitation in playing him. Ideally, if you can, can't loop him this week, given the Crows play the final game of the round, but going forward, the emergency loophole is the way to go with someone like that and take the score. If it's good enough this week, if you need a fullback, play the Hawks, Adelaide Oval, should do okay. Floor hopefully isn't a very low one given how hard he works and given how clean and efficient he is he has been with the ball so far early in his AFL career. You can back him in, um, you know, for hopefully at least a 70. The proudest I've ever heard you talk about anyone. <laughs> Just, yeah, gosh, tears welling up in your eyes. It's great to see. <laughs> Just waiting for the thank you from Billy himself uh, as well. For, I think the lair convinced him, convinced I, Matthew Nix to finally pick our boy Billy. I feel like the, the lair actually like collectively adopted Billy Dowling at one point. So, I mean, it feels like, yeah, that le- thank you letter should be in the mail at some point. Um, yep, but outside let- of that, are there any other sort of like, are we just pinning any hopes on like, you know, if we want to talk about South Australia, Dan Curtin, like there was so much talk about him popping back off and not getting named last week. Are you keeping your eyes sort of towards him at all the, for the rest of the season there, Phantom? Just talking about Dan Curtin uh, in the office over here. Very good in the Crow sample win against North Adelaide on the weekend. Could come back in. They've got some injuries. Nick uh, Murray 
could have an issue. Jordan Butts probably won't play. 21 touches, two goals for Dan Curtin oh, in the sample for the Crows reserves on the weekend. Uh, the assistant coaching group spoke very highly of what he did. So he could come back in this week. Perfect opportunity, I think, to give him another go. Uh, the Hawks home on a Sunday afternoon. Matthew Nix has seen what the you know, the injection of that youth has done to his side over the past couple of weeks. Might go again. But I mean, when it comes to this late in the year, players like him, or are there any others that you maybe have a sneaky eye on who we'd actually rather them just get to, just hold them over to next year and we can get them a bit cheaper to uh, put them in our starting teams? Ideally, Curtin would be perfect. So maybe we 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 campaign we campaign for Billy in. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, maybe we should campaign for Dan Curtin out of the side. But a few players have already uh, been ruled. Jackson Bins uh, from the Blues and big numbers in the VFL. Uh, on the weekend, a big year last year as well um, in his first year on the list. So hopefully um, we just save him for next year. Nice one. Anyone else that you want to hit on there, Patch, Al? No, just wanted to check how many trades you had left, Phantom. How how you're tracking for the run home? You don't need <laughs> trades when you've got cover <laughs> like mine, Patch. It's all about what you've got on the bench. I've spoken about on this show and the lair, quality, not quantity. And I've got some quality. On the bench, zero trades, and you already know the answer to that one. So, um, but got some cover. Hopefully, going to get okay. Been swinging back and forth around and everywhere to cover the boards over the past couple of weeks. Jordan Dawson won't play this week. Um, some wait and see on a few others too. But hopefully, got enough cover to get through. Hopefully, Max Gorn returns this week as well, and I can keep my lead on the great man now. There you go. We uh, the guest just before you, our beloved Drew Jones, might have actually just sort of. Come to the party with some of the good Max Gorn news, which is kind of neat. Either way, that's been the Phantom. Thanks for jumping back on with us, mate. Appreciate it. Good to see or hear those sultry tones once more. See you guys. All right, how good was that from both the Phantom and the amazingly chinned Drew Jones? <laughs> i got to say, that is a great chin. Quick fire round, gentlemen. Who will be the number one defender this year at the moment? It is Luke Ryan behind him. It's the Chisel. 53 points of rears. Nick Dacos is back by 64 as well. you got Dan Houston, Lockie Whitfield, and who's that, Jordan Clark? Yep. Just hanging out in the top six. Jeez. Patch, what do you reckon? Who's going to be number one? The big she's. Nice. Give me some yeah. she's. Ryan's, yeah, I like him too. Ryan's scoring, Al. It's dropped off in the last sort of like – Little while, but you have pointed out that he is amazingly consistent. That's plateaued. Yes. yes. Well, I think his last three weeks, 99, 98, 98. Um, so, yeah, I think there was just a bit of a subtle tweak in how Frio was playing sort of mid-season around their bye. Well, that, that Not was, as many backwards kicks. and They also lost Alex Pierce for a while. So we had to play yeah, in lockdown. That's true. Brennan Cox is back. Alex Pierce was back. Is now injured again. So Yeah, I looked at the numbers. At Hayden Young, you talk about players that we traded – early in the year and, you know, lost patience with pretty quickly. I mean, on total points, he's still uh, well ahead if you swapped him to Luke Ryan. But over the last, uh, since round 15, Young's averaging 107 and Ryan's averaging 101. So you actually wouldn't be too badly off if you just hung on to Ryan the whole time. Interesting. Uh, should we have held on to Jordan's sweet patch? <laughs> I, look, it depends on who you traded <laughs> to him um, and who you traded him to. I like um, it. So if you traded from Brody Grundy to Jordan Sweet, it I, might have been smart just to keep Sweet. Well, as it would have been smarter to keep Grundy. Yeah, smarter yes. to keep Grundy. Um, if you traded from like a bench rookie to keep him, maybe I don't. I don't know. He doesn't have <laughs> a DPP, so he's really like you'd be playing him on field. You're concerned about Soldo. I don't know. I, I just put this down because I was uh, sort of surprised, I guess, to see that some people still had Sweet sitting on their ruck bench. Last yeah. week, I thought I'll just bring him on to cover for Gorn, and he scores ninety four. So he outscored Grundy, he outscored Nank. He's look, he's fine. He's fine as a ruckman. <laughs> he just like, I don't know, like, like it. Nice one. <laughs> he's uh, he's been like a like watching Port. You're like, oh, is he better than Soldo? Like, what's happening now? Okay. I'm not even sure where. I don't think Soldo played in the sample on the weekend. Is he injured? Mm. I don't know. Anyway, okay. how expensive will we will my beloved Sean Manor be by the end of this year? Is it three twelve? He's made one hundred and ninety five thousand dollars in three weeks, making me look like some sort of brain genius. <laughs> and his break even this week is twelve. So touch wood, he goes above that. But geez, what do we reckon? How how far can he go, Al? Uh, could he get to four hundred k? The Supercoach Plus projects he'll plateau out at about three sixty. But I mean, that's just just sort of worth noting uh, that amazing 
run a form and and price rise. Although I don't know if too many people will get to spend it. It's probably yeah, that's probably like, the tough uh, part. Kicking the guts, but um, yeah, amazing if you've hang on to him all year. Uh, Jack McRae, oh, this one sucks. R.I.P. He had eight Ooh. on the weekend. Oh, eight. Yeah. Thank you, Bevo. Uh, I love Jack McRae. He's always been one of my favourite super coach players. Mm, lovely. Uh, to the point where I've got him in draft this week. Oh, this year, and he's been on my bench the last few weeks, and I've now had to drop him. So. Yeah, just thought, yeah. Heart. He was. We should just first. share our uh, our Jack McRae memories because he is a, a super coach Hall of Famer, I would say. And I know Pat, yeah. you were one of the uh, the early adopters I, of uh, Jack McRae. Look, I I don't want to get you know my head too big, but I I called it. I called the Jack McRae breakout, and God, it just breaks your heart. Just breaks your goddamn little heart just to see it <laughs> fall away so quickly. But it's a reminder of you know the mortality of man and the fact that. <laughs> You know, we're not on this planet forever. And, you know, you've got to enjoy the good times while they last and make hay while the sun shines and you've got to score points while you're not in the sub best. That's the key takeaway. True. Um, All right. Vail Jack. Pull one out. Uh, and finally, can we trust anyone as captain? Yeah, nah, what do we reckon? Uh, well, it's very hard. I mean, when you talk about, you know, we didn't even really think about Nick Dacos as a captain this week anymore. Uh, Luke Ryan's dropped off. You know, Gorn, obviously not around. Um, and the ones that I could think of were Sheasel, who's, uh, we've touched on, been so good. Eight out of nine, over 100 uh, his last nine games and uh, putting up some really good numbers. And your man. Stupid Sam sexy Flanders. Flanders. Exactly. Stupid sexy Flanders. He's the only one. So he's got 19 scores over 100 out of 19. Yep. This season. Only player. Just I love it. Lock and load. Like, based on the last few weeks, he's just, just lock him in. <laughs> BCLC, he'll... Even if it's, even <laughs> I've if made a list of down. possible captains. We could have even put five on there. It's just... Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, Al. When would you learn? Never. Uh, stats with, with, with Al. Hey, Al, are you ready for Stats with Al with Al? Um, well, we can be very quick this week. We did touch on uh, Conan Brown's 24 tackles in the VFL, um, over 180 super coach points. So hopefully he comes in <laughs> for the Demons. And, yeah, I mentioned Hayden Young that um, – uh, how well he's been going, and I saw a stat from Champion today. Third most score assists ever over a six-week period, the last six weeks for him. Um, the other, some pretty good names on this list. I um, thought we might have a quiz, but we probably don't have time for that. But the great, uh, he's one behind Shane Edwards and Steve Johnson, who wow. are the, uh, the title for number one, and uh, Hayden Young at number three. So nice. he's going all right. That's fantastic. Not Ryan Myers. Uh, uh, <laughs> captain's call for this week. Really early guns. Uh, mine's probably going to be Zach Butters against the Blues at Marvel Stadium on Friday night. Jeez, he was just, uh, they just managed him on Saturday night. It makes me nervous. But I'm nervous about everyone. Port are pretty good at Marvel. They're not that bad. Carlton give up plenty of scores to inside mid. So uh, that might go into Dacos, actually. We just talked about this right then against the Tigers Sunday mm. afternoon. So... At the G, I feel like Dacos could have an absolute field day against Richmond. Richmond so. is the most uh, gives up the most points to midfielders and defenders. Not that Dacos really plays there anymore, but I just feel like maybe they've tightened up a little bit in recent weeks. Obviously, um, Butters and Rosie didn't go massive on the weekend, although they both were off the ground for a fair period, which probably helped. But when you've got uh, Tarantos coming back, I think this week Prestia and Hopper, it's a little bit harder to score against. But um, I looked up uh, Harry Shees was scored 159 against Geelong in Ooh. round five, so he definitely needs to be. In consideration, uh, Grundy's back at the SCG. Uh, Lock him in. Uh, the Bond always we have to consider, but playing Sydney, hardest team to score against, we saw what they did to yeah. Lockie Neal. Lockie Neal playing Gold Coast scored 168 when they played earlier this year. But, but are they playing at the People's Republic of the Gold Coast or are they playing at – Actually, that's a good the, question. Where are they, they are playing about? above the 28th parallel at People's First. There you go. Well, well Noah Anderson, there you go. Noah Anderson's Noah Anderson. locked Anderson. in. So. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, the Gabba is also above it is. The, so that be parallel. Fine, so – Either way, that'll be Patch, fine. have you got some vibes? Um, she's a VC and then uh, uh, throw some darts at the board for C. Maybe Sarong against the Eagles. Yeah, don't mind. Adopt us in the, the, the derby, the derby, the derby. Nice. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll see. I'm hoping that it's just she's and then I don't have to worry about it. Righto. Name game. It's a game of names. Al, you got a win on the board this week because my beloved Lawson Humphreys only managed 61 and your beloved Billy Dowling had 81. Hey. So you get one on the board. I think it's 10, 5, and 1 to me, 5, 10, and 1 for you. So not bad. There's five rounds left. I can catch you. You can, just. Uh, <laughs> what do you want to do? Draw. <laughs> what do we want to do this week? Do, do you want to go head to head captains? If I go Dacos, yeah. do you want to go somebody else? You've just talked oh. up your tigers. I'll happily back in, Nick. Oh, yeah. yeah all right. Um, who would I back in? I mean, Dacos, Dacos versus Lockie Neal. All right. Done. Lock and load. <laughs> Don't mind can't, that. Can't fire for me two weeks in a row. Surely. All right, Monday moves. Are we making any moves this week, gentlemen? I am keeping my powder dry and just hoping that Gorn comes back. 
Yeah, geez, I don't know. I mean, we'll obviously have to wait uh, and see some teams and injuries, and although I know Nank is out. I mean, if Fisher misses, uh, it's a major, major problem because I don't have anyone to cover for him. And as you say, he might be back to the VFL for a while. So mm. what is he, 473, lost about 30 grand on the weekend, but I do have some cash in the bank. Are there any decent forwards out there? Jai Caldwell maybe if he uh, doesn't get rubbed out? My beloved Jai Caldwell. He's projected for a 131 this week against the Saints. Don't mm. mind that. Mm. Don't mind that at all. No. Uh, I want to try Zach Fisher out as well, but I have five hundred dollar dues in the bank, <laughs> oh uh, mirroring my real life bank account. So, uh, I no too expensive. Oh, is he really? He's too expensive. I can't. <laughs> it's Jesse Hogan. It's Levi Casbolt. Oh, it's you gotta like, bring Levi. Oh, it's some DPP shenanigans and Sean Lemons. <laughs> like, there's not. Like, I'll probably hold fire and just eat a donut on the weekend. But nice one. How many trades, if you can I ask? Uh, slightly less than two, <laughs> slightly more. It's a positive number. Okay, nice. well, that's good. That's, um, it's one. All right. <laughs> so I've got one trade left. Good stuff. Well, that is it for the round 20 preview, the round 19 wrap. Remember to subscribe to Supercoach Plus to take your game to the next level. Follow all things Supercoach with Code Sports as well. Got the latest news and analysis. Uh, and if you haven't already, what are you doing? Come on, leave a rating review on Apple, Spotify, subscribe to the Code Sports YouTube, get right around it. And for all the latest news, breakdowns, previews, and wraps, get around the AFL Today show. That's pretty fun. Uh, yeah, there you go. Thank you to Patch. Thank you. Thank you to Phantom. Thank you to the extremely chinned Drew Jones. And thanks to Elle. Thank you, James. Not a problem. I've been James Clements. Have a great week and happy super coaching. Mm-hmm.